Okay, now that I've neatened up all the cables below and, and tightened this bottom chamber, it's, it's, it's extremely important to maintain the IP66 rating of the inverter to keep it waterproof that you do this tightly. So these screws, these four screws here need to be tight so that it forms a seal around this chamber so water can't get in. Um, and now we are ready to power it up to, to start setting it up on the app. So first things, so we've got three things here. We've got AC, which is always a good idea to go on first, and I'll explain to you in a moment. You can turn on solar. Um, you can wait a long time to turn on solar. There's no rush or anything. And then we can turn on batteries, and then it powers up the inverter. The reason why I recommend turning on AC first is if you turn on the others first, no damage will be done, it will be perfect, everything will be fine, but an alarm code of no grid will be detected by the inverter if you take too long. If you're quick about it, you can skip that process, but um, an event log will be created and it will create a timestamp with no grid alarm, and that is just not good to see. So that's why I say AC first. Just before I do that, actually, um, the antenna that comes in the box, this nice long antenna fits into the antenna port on the bottom of the inverter and it's, it's you just hand tighten it um, and it boosts the Bluetooth um, strength that is not hard at all so we don't have an LCD so the way to set up this inverter and look at the inverter is through Bluetooth you go to the App Store and um, search for Solus Cloud you're looking for an icon that looks like that, and then you um, you can download it. Here's the login screen of the app. Now that we've downloaded the app, we've got it on our phone. We don't have to log in with our uh, log into the into our accounts. We can just remain completely offline. It's very important that you can set up this inverter while offline. So you click at the bottom, more tools. If you click on that, it will take us to the options of setting it up locally or setting up a Wi-Fi connection. And then we want to go for a local operation, so we're connecting to the Bluetooth. Then we click click um, connect to with Bluetooth. And then we've got a bunch of inverters in our lab at the moment. So if you've got multiple inverters, the serial number is the name of the Bluetooth network. And our inverter here is 005, so we're going to connect to that one. Okay, and at the moment, as soon as you press on that, you it, on the inverter itself, it shows up the icon of Bluetooth, so you know that you are connected correctly to the correct inverter. Now, there's two account types. There's end customer and installer, and um, end customers have obviously got owners have got less abilities to change settings and less data. Installers have got more. We are an installer, so let's click installer, and then the first first time you connect to this inverter it asks you to set a password six character password and um, it's very important that these passwords are set so I'm just going to select it to um, Solus 1 and just click the little eye icon to make sure it's correct it's quite a, 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 a an effort to reset these passwords so um, good idea to make sure that you know it <clears throat> set password Then as you open up the app for the first time, it opens, it takes you up to a very useful wizard. Um, so starting off from the wizard, we've got inverted time. So if we just click follow phone time here, it's, uh, it will follow the, invert the phone's time and, and set it on the inverter. So that's quite nice. Click next. Then battery model. So we've got this um, inverter set up to a peer drive battery. So we're going to select peer drive and click next. Meter type, so as I said uh, during the installation, we went, we went with the meter solution, but in the box you get that CT solution which you could easily select here. When you do do CT selection, you are uh, for a CT ratio. The default CT ratio for um, our inverters is 2000 to 1. When you're selecting meter, you've got options on what meters to select. Here we've got single phase meter, three phase meter, Eastron, Eastron. Um, we've got a single phase Eastron here and we've got it connected on the grid. I would always recommend, highly recommend, almost insist that you put it on the grid connection and not on the load connection. So that's good settings. We can click save and then we click next. 
and then we've got grid codes here. So depending on the market that you've got, you select your grid code. We've got quite a few inverters selected. We try to ship out with the correct grid standard selected. So this is G99. We will click next. And then the work mode. For, for normal circumstances, it would be self-use. So that is when it's looking to optimize the energy inside the property and, and keep the energy local. And as soon as the inverter sees export, it charges. As soon as it sees that you're buying electricity, it discharges the batteries to stop those charging. So that's the default mode. Um, the other common mode that we often see is time charging. So if we go into self-use, we can set time charging. For example, if you've got a cheaper tariff between midnight and, and four o'clock in the morning, you would set a charge time so you would set the start time to midnight to zero zero and the, the end time to four o'clock in the morning and how this logic works is anything undefined it will revert back to self-use and that's exactly what we want um, when it's in that cheaper tariff period we want it to charge from the grid as fast as um, well at the, the, the charge current we define and then outside the periods we want to if we are importing and buying electricity it must charge um it, it must discharge the batteries to stop that import and then conversely if we're selling the electricity again we should um, have it that it will uh, charge the batteries when it sees export so that's cool so when you to do that you must just make sure that all the other periods are undefined and you've got the start time for discharging equal to the end time for discharging so that second discharge time slot it's starting at 8 a.m and ending at 8 a.m so that's fabulous so cool you just need to make sure so if you have that time of use switch at the top there disabled it will never use the settings below so as soon as you hit the time of use switch it's now using those settings below and it will charge accordingly those limits so it's very, it's, it's healthy for your batteries to charge them as slow as possible. So calculate the total kilowatt hour uh, capacity of your batteries and you've got the total time to charge it. Divide it by that to calculate the power at which you want to charge it. And then it's a 50 volt nominal battery, so you can calculate the current after that. So we've, we've selected 50 amps and that's fine. <clears throat> Allow charging from grid should always be enabled for uh, this, this application as well as force charging to keep your batteries alive when they are critically low. So that's a good setting to always leave enabled. And then battery reserve at the bottom is, is useful for the, um, the cases when you're trying to use UPS circuits or backup circuits in conjunction or as well as self-use. So if you wanted to use 20% of your battery for self-use and the rest is for must be kept for a, a backup scenario, you would set that to 80%. If you wanted to keep 40% for self-use and 60% for backup, you would set that to 60%. So we're going to set it to 60% because we don't mind. Um, we've got a lot of space in our batteries and we will, in the period of, of backup, we will survive with 60% battery. And then you also need to enable that, obviously. Okay, so we've done with the modes. Um, there are other modes on the screen is feed in priority, which is seldom used. And, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do different videos for that, explaining that. And then off grid mode is just makes the inverter in a completely off grid mode and it doesn't connect to the grid at all. Then you click next. And we are done with setting up the inverter. The inverter should be completely set up and now I would recommend, highly recommend, some, some troubleshooting and turning on kettle. I always call it a kettle test. Turn on the kettle, make sure that it discharges um, the inverter as you turn on the kettle because that's what you would expect in self-use. When it sees that the import is coming from the grid, um, from that kettle, it should discharge the batteries to cancel out that import. However, obviously, if you've got a lot of solar coming in and you're exporting excess power or you've got enough sun, solar power coming in to supply that kettle, it will not do that. So just do things that, um, that will run the tests in your head and, and make sure it all makes sense.
On the top right hand oh, of this screen, you can see the status of the inverter and it says run, so everything seems okay. Uh, we've got our solar panels on this overview screen showing us our real-time solar power generation, then our battery information, our battery SOC in the middle, um, our energy values are spread across the screen as well, and then your consumption and usage um, on the system is also shown here. Um, so yeah, that all looks good and we are happy. If you wanted to see alarm messages, uh, you can click on the alarm at the bottom and you can see the current alarm. We haven't got any alarms in here, but if we had to turn off the grid isolator, we would see it there and that's good for troubleshooting. And then information is also extremely useful for troubleshooting. But we have set up this inverter and we are really happy. So thank you very much and cheers.